The absolute best time to buy anything is at a point of capitulation. I'm going to give you a whole bunch of examples in this video about cryptocurrencies, real estate, stocks. I will even tell you about one of my own personal investments, which is, in my opinion, at a point of capitulation right now. And it is easily already the single most frustrating investment I've ever owned. Everyone's stampeding for a certain thing, and then all of a sudden, nobody wants anything to do with it anymore. You've heard the expression, blood in the streets, that's capitulation. Or if you're buying things for pennies on the dollar, that's when they're throwing the baby out with the bathwater. In fact, the very single best trade I've ever made in my entire career was a capitulation trade, and we'll get into that in this video. But the point is, when you see capitulation coming and you act on it when it happens, that's a generational buying opportunity. It'll change your life. Nothing we say in this video is intended as personalized trading advice for you. Think of it this way. In your opinion, is there more pain ahead? If there is, typically you're not at capitulation yet. I get into this at length in my book, Up Thinking. I'm talking about how you can test for capitulation. When you say, I'm thinking about getting involved in such and such. And the response to that is anyone you tell that to is scoffs or eye rolls or they laugh at you. And before we get into all the good stuff, I want to tell you that the biggest risk with capitulation is that as something looks to be capitulating, it may be on the path to zero. And you have to be quick. That's why you want to be watching it ahead of time. The speed at which it bounces back and starts moving higher when it does is not only in terms of the speed of it, but also in terms of the magnitude of it. Things bounce back faster and more from capitulation from just about any other point. That's why you have to be ready and not miss out on that initial bounce. There will be capitulation in blue chip stocks. A lot of negative trends are pushing stocks lower, and we'll get into this in a minute. At a certain point, anyone who wants to sell will have been selling. Before that, they're still selling pressure until they get exhausted, and that's when you can see a capitulation bounce in a blue chip stock. That's why I'm telling you guys to watch closely, even though I have a negative view of the stock market and I have for a while, there will come a point when all the selling is done, when the trends shift, when you're getting an unbelievable value, which is so obvious to you. Some people might say, well, isn't this just like picking the bottom? I would never suggest anybody ever try to pick the bottom. And the beauty of capitulation is you don't have to pick the bottom. You just have to know as it rounds out the best time to start getting involved into an asset or an investment that nobody else wants at that point in time. I say at that point, just buy the indexes. You don't have to pick certain stocks. Just buy the indexes. This is not trading advice for you. It's not personalized trading advice. It's easy though. You probably have a broker already. You, you can just buy an S&P ETF or any of the indexes. That'll be as profitable if you get it at a capitulation point as just about any investing you've done. And a lot of times they think, well, blue chip stocks, they maybe move a bit, but they don't move big time. It's not going to make you rich. If you get involved at the capitulation point, you'll be amazed by the degree at which the shares increase in value from that point. We're not talking 6% gains here. We're talking a lot more than that. And that's from blue chip stocks. That's how powerful capitulation is. That's why I talk about it so much right now in this video, in my book, in the newsletter. Now, I know you guys might think I'm a bit tough on cryptocurrencies lately, but that's only because I'm working to identify a capitulation point, to identify it to you, because that is when I personally am going to be backing up the truck, buying with both hands, getting greedy when everybody else is afraid. And I think it was Warren Buffett who said, and don't quote me on that, be greedy when everyone else is afraid, be afraid when everyone else is greedy. But let me set the stage with a little bit of an example from history here. I'm looking at cryptocurrencies only from a psychological trading angle. The mindsets and actions of crowds. But let me give you an example from history. And I'll start that off by asking you, how many automobile manufacturers were there in the United States of America at the turn of the century? I'll give you some time to make a guess in your mind. The answer was over 1,800 of them. And that was a psychologically driven phenomena. You might say, well, Peter, you're crazy. What are you talking about? It was a brand new industry. The car had just been invented. Everybody wanted to get involved. They're building out a whole 
network of roads, building out the whole structure for the car to be usable. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly where we're at with a lot of these cryptocurrencies, the concept. And we'll get into Bitcoin specifically in just a second here. But I believe that the altcoins are going to have a similar fate to all the automobile manufacturers, which no longer exist. And the failure rate of them was well over 99.9%. I'm not saying that to try and be dramatic or scare you or get views on the YouTube video. I'm saying that because that's the math. The math may be similar to that with the altcoins. I'm telling you all of this and I'm watching it so closely because I don't want you to miss what's going to be a generational buying opportunity and, in my view, Bitcoin only. None of the other cryptos, maybe Ethereum. Why do we say Bitcoin only, maybe Ethereum? It's the psychologically driven aspect of it. People, if you went to 10 different people in 10 different locations all over the world, you said name three cryptocurrencies, they would say Bitcoin, they'd say Ethereum, and then they'd say a third one. And that third one would be any number of different cryptocurrencies. And in fact, you could try it yourself right now. Go call up your mom and dad and ask them. Go call your grandma, call your friend, your coworker who doesn't know anything about cryptocurrencies. Yes, they're going to tell you three cryptos. They'll tell you Bitcoin, they'll tell you Ethereum. And they'll tell you a third one, on balance. And the more I look into it, I'm certain that Bitcoin will never, ever go away as long as cryptocurrencies exist in a concept at all. That's why you got to make sure that you're not looking at a capitulation on something that's on its path to zero. I don't think Bitcoin has a path to zero. That's why it's a great target for capitulation because if you get involved at a lower price you're less likely to have to worry about calamitous downside. They're not going to go bankrupt. This is from explodingtopics.com. There's 21,844 cryptocurrencies in existence. And they go on to say that not all cryptocurrencies are active or valuable. In my view, the way I would describe that is that they died on the vine. A lot of these altcoins are dying on the vine. So let's get rid of all these dead cryptos Get rid of all those. That leaves about 9,314 active cryptocurrencies. And there's over 300 million cryptocurrency users around the globe. Divide that into 8 billion people on the planet. That's 1 out of 25 people are involved in cryptocurrencies. So, could that get to 10 out of 25 people? Sure, there'll be a lot more people getting into the space, a lot more money going into it. But that does not mean that the random altcoin that you invested in is going to survive this massive calling that is ahead of us it could be 25 out of 25 people getting into cryptocurrencies a lot of altcoins will still go to zero most of them was there and is there capitulation in cryptocurrencies right now after this price decline that we've seen well you ask yourself is there more pain ahead i don't know i believe there's a lot more pain ahead I think we need to work out these growing pains before we can build a base and start moving from that point. I believe that Bitcoin will fall to a capitulation point, and I'm not even suggesting it's anytime soon. I'm going to wait till we get to 7,000, and I'm not saying that it will happen. There's not necessarily a capitulation point in everything all the time. I believe there will be, and once Bitcoin gets to 7,000, that's when I'm going to really start setting up to decide a buy point to get involved, which will be lower than 7,000. But that's the point that will wake me up to keep an eye on it at that point to try and grab the capitulation when it happens. But just like everybody drives the car now, there's lots more cars now than ever. It was not a good investment to buy any of the 1,800 car companies at the turn of the century. And I promise you to talk about the single best trade I ever made, which is a capitulation trade. I bought... Pennystocks.com for an incredibly small amount of money because I bought it at a capitulation point. Nobody wanted it. They're trying to get rid of it as the company went bankrupt. I sold it within a couple of years. What about real estate? Isn't that capitulation coming up? There's a lot of pressures on real estate. Ask yourself, is there more pain ahead? In my opinion, there will be a lot more pain just ahead. Home builder sentiment dropped for the 12th straight month to the lowest level since 2012. 
according to the National Association of Home Builders. With higher rates now, more people are walking away from their homes, especially if they're underwater. They might have a house worth $200,000 that they owe $300,000 on. It makes more sense sometimes to walk away from that house. My uncle did this in the 80s. A lot of people walked away from their houses at that time. People were underwater. Why pay the bank more than the actual value of the asset? So maybe they're underwater, they walk away from their house, or they go delinquent, or they're forced to list their place for sale. A lot of this is going to lead to increases in supply. And I told you that the supply would heal itself without it being based on building new homes. The supply will organically heal. There will be more supply coming onto the market because of the economic trends and tides that we're seeing right now. None of this that we've seen so far suggests capitulation. We're closer to a market top, in fact, so don't get involved looking for capitulation just because you want to find one. Wait till you see it. Wait till it's undeniable. And I'll get into the points how you know if you see an actual capitulation. I'll tell you exactly things to look for so that you'll know for sure. Wait for the bottom. And you're going to know when the bottom is in, in real estate, just like with cryptos, because I'm watching this stuff and I'm going to tell you when it happens, when we get close to it. So especially if you're getting educated from the content on this channel, you understand we're going to be keeping an eye on it so we can tell you when we see capitulation nearing in real estate, nearing in cryptocurrencies, nearing in stocks. And as promised, I want to tell you about an investment that I made personally myself. This is not a stock pick. Do not buy this stock. I'm not suggesting anybody buy this stock. It's completely inappropriate for you. It's completely thinly traded. These guys have proven to me over four different CEOs going back to when the company was going by a different name. I've been around with this company. But this stock is so thinly traded and speculative, it's not appropriate for most investors. And it's trading at about three or four cents. And this is a lot of tax loss selling pushing it even lower because the stock did not perform well. And so now as you get close to the end of the year, sometimes people are selling the shares of a thinly traded stock to actualize their loss so that they pay less tax on other capital gains. This is a stock that broke me. It's absolutely more frustrating than any investment I've ever been involved with. This stock is Yangaroo, and I'm not telling you to buy it. I'm not promoting this stock at all. If you already own it, don't worry too much, because I believe in the long-term picture of this company. So the people at the top of the company are believing in the company, but I'm not going to talk it up. I'm just saying that a lot of what you're looking at with this company it is, in my mind, at a capitulation point right now, in my opinion. This is not trading advice. I do not think you should buy shares of this company. People too often look at, what stock should I buy? What stock should I buy? Think of it this way. Where is the capitulation that you're going to spot? In whatever investment that's in, that's what you're buying. Whether it's in real estate, like it was in the mortgage meltdown, that was capitulation in the real estate market. There were houses owned by investment banks and real estate companies that they didn't even list on the market that they did not want. But they didn't want to overwhelm all the selling by putting all these houses on the market. It would have crashed the market even more than it already was. So a lot of these investment banks just held the homes that they did not want, that they foreclosed upon, and did not list them, just sat on them. That was a capitulation point. There's a capitulation point in oil when it's trading for negative $35. When you talk to somebody about a cryptocurrency and they laugh at you. The greatest time to invest in anything is when no one wants it. And it makes a great gift. If you missed anybody on your list, you get a digital copy or the audio copy and you could have it immediately. In the book, I give lots of examples of capitulation. We saw it in Dutch tulip bulbs. We saw it in real estate and the mortgage meltdown. We saw it in domain names after the dot-com bubble burst. We will be seeing it soon again in real estate and we'll be seeing it soon in cryptocurrencies in my opinion. We'll see it in stocks when we pretty much bottom out. I think there's still more pain ahead. To know if you're watching capitulation or just witnessing a dying asset on its way to zero, consider these points. The asset starts with high demand and a very wide base of purchasers. Fear of missing out drives increasing interest. Then, eventually, anyone who wants to get in has gotten in. That's when you see drop-off in demand. 
thinking surrounding the investment switches from fear of missing out to profit taking. And that's when the broad and deep base of owners suddenly see a shocking value and price decline. Sort of as we have seen with cryptocurrencies when they fell from $70,000 to where they are now. But we're not at a capitulation point yet. We're just part way there. Sellers are forced to become more aggressive and settle for lower and lower prices. The best moment for buyers during a capitulation point is when everyone who wants to sell has sold. The good news is that you do not need to get the exact price bottom. You mean close to or approaching capitulation can be very profitable and rewarding. Various examples of capitulation throughout history, the Dutch tulip bulb mania, of course, the automobile manufacturers, the mortgage meltdown. Look guys, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate the support and the loyalty. We're working really hard for you here behind the scenes. I promise you that.